world of 1916 was complex, or the world of 1945 was complex, the world of 2016 is intensely complex. You'll be dealing with terrorists, you'll be dealing with hybrid armies, you'll be dealing with little green men, you're going to be dealing with tribes, you'll be dealing with national leaders and local leaders, you'll be dealing with politics and economics, and you'll be dealing with direct fire and indirect fire, and you're going to be dealing with it all, and it's all going to be dealt with simultaneously. Well, we made it this far into August, about halfway through here or halfway more, and we decided to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that today. We've we've uh, continued in our education as to the ploy of the enemy, the enemy being the reptilians, the Illuminati, Lucifer, Lucifer you know, those people, all of them are part of that gang, the, they're thugs, the hoods, criminals, and they've they've taken over the United States of America, forming a corporation called the United States. And we as citizens are the target. Many of you are TIs. Many of you are being gang stalked. Many of you are being terrorized. You are being waterboarded electronically. You are being put into situations that are terrifying. And we're trying to do the best we can to educate you on what's going on, take it to your prayer closet, see what the Lord wants you to do with it, and go from there. Now, we cover a little bit of everything. You know, we're we're, um, equal opportunists about subjects, and so it doesn't matter what it is. Now, tonight, uh, you know, I, I, I named the show Iridium and the 700 Club, and Julie did some running the numbers on the 700, and so I'll have her bring that up. So right now I'm going to address the iridium, and then she's also uh, got some stuff about that. But the point of it is is that we're under a great attack. This is a time, though it may have been seen in times before, we need to understand the programming that has come out of the seminaries was to teach us that the the world is only maybe 6,000 years old or so. And in reality, it's very ancient, it's very old. And so this may be round number five, who knows, whatever the situation is. But whatever the circumstances are, we have minerals, we have those things on our earth that are very rare, that aren't found naturally that are those things that they say maybe may have come from meteorites, may have come from other places. And that may be the case. I'm not going to argue that because we know so little about everything, and the only thing that we really know is what the hierarchy, the ones who call themselves Illuminati, the illuminated ones, which are nothing more than demon-possessed creatures, we only know what they tell us. And so there's a vast amount of information that we don't know. Now, <clears throat> Iridium is also the satellite system designed by Motorola. We talked about that. I have gone in depth. I don't want to go over too much before. We talked about the satellites, the 66 and so forth. But I also want to mention with the Iridium element being that ore, that it's element number 77 on the periodic chart. And it happens to be the name that they selected for the satellite system. Okay, and what's interesting is the human brain. Now, remember, it's a very, very rare earth uh, mineral or a mineral of the, uh, in the earth, and yet our dry matter of our brain. Otherwise, if you dehydrate the brain and you have just the dry matter, and uh, there's actually about five percent in the brain. Now, where in the world does that come from? If it's such a, an element that's so rare in, in the world, how are we born with it? Well, obviously, it has something to do with the mind that God has put into us has something that is significant because it has a very high corrosive level, even at high temperatures. And it's a, a property uh, being in a metal 
a ferrous type metal, that it has a heavy weight, so it has a, a conducting ability under extreme circumstances versus some others that, that, that oxidate. Uh, you'll see this with silver. Uh, you'll see with copper, aluminum is really bad, and these other minerals. Now, <clears throat> wherever it comes from, and whatever reason we have it, obviously it's there for a reason. Now, the reason that I bring it up is here they select the name for the mind control system, Iridium, the satellites that orbit the Earth, the ones that they told us were originally for cell phone, cell phone communications, and though it does do that, remember we talked about double duty of cell towers and so forth, so it, it, we need to also understand that in their implementation, their launching, their deploying of these, that as they built these, as they designed them, they are also energy weapons. Now, as an energy weapon, they're capable of, through nitrogen uh, e uh, emission, okay, you, you have visual, you have, you have ultraviolet, you have infrared, you have white light, which is in our spectrum, uh, you have you have radio waves, you have gamma, you have X-ray. Uh, at the upper end, you go to the other end. You've got ELF, okay, VLF, all the way up through HF and VHF and UHF. You get into the microwave areas of cell phones, 2.4 gigahertz. All of these numbers that were used for cell phones for frequencies are significant in mind control, okay. And this was something that Tesla himself uh, had, had, um, had discovered. I believe one of the reasons he was persecuted, he was, he was abused, he was incarcerated, they, they, they took his things away from him, it's because they saw the, the value of what he was doing. Now, whether he was a humani humanitarian or not, you know, that's what we're led to believe. I, I guess I go with that because he was also capable of sending energy from one place to another and wanted to give us that. But, you know, you get the guys like Rockefeller and these other yahoos who are all the reptilian of, of Satan's seed, and the CFR, Council for Relations, those of the Illuminati, well, they couldn't just have that, right? Right. they got to control everything. <clears throat> Now, in this technology known as the, the Tesla wave is then formed out of it uh, mind control, mind reading, mind visual reading, being able to see, being able to hear your thoughts. Now, I, I, I did a lot of research on this technology. Okay? In and by itself, it can't be done unless you use several elements. And I, and I talked about heterodyning. And in that, you'll notice that during the Cold War, there was an establishment of the Gwen Towers. These are Earth-based transmitters that are put all over the United States that were to be of ground wave emergency network during the times of high-altitude nuclear explosions. Okay, Now, I want you to listen to me now. I said the other night that I told you the, the guys I bumped elbows with when I was in the ham radio clubs with them, otherwise learning from the old dogs, that HF was going to be key during nuclear fallout, nuclear war. So obviously they knew that. So those who try and discredit me, then why in the world are they using ELF, HF, VLF, and the communication towers, ground wave emergency network by the Navy during nuclear attacks? I rest my case. All right now again this was established during the cold war but more money was dumped into it even when the cold war was over mm, now that's weird now we've talked about the schumann residence those frequencies of the earth 7.3878 7, and these different ones now they need to be specific because a little bit higher or a little bit lower can cause anxieties can cause euphoria can cause all kinds of, of weird mind and body experiences when we're out of resonance, okay? So these ground-based GWEM, G-W-E-M, you can Google those, uh, they establish more of them. So there's an estimated at a minimal 300, possibly 500 all over the United States. Now, they being of the military, they would get a, a several acres of land and, and erect these towers which would simulate when you see an AM broadcast station, 
when you see an FM broadcast station for radio, just normal broadcasting, they look very similar to that because of it being of a low frequency, it needs to be a long antenna, okay? Now, there's some, some top hat technology used for inductance, and they don't need the quite the height that they would normally use because at low frequencies, it's a very tall tower, and so they use what they call quarter wave, okay, now on, on vertical. Now, just in Pennsylvania alone, there are three of these, okay, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and State College. Now, I'm familiar with State College. I was born, I don't know, 50 miles from there, Jersey Shore, uh, Williamsport, Pennsylvania, got family still there. Now, that's an awful lot of those in a small um, state, but we need to remember that the state of Pennsylvania, when I did a book report on it, well, I was in the fifth grade, I mean, that was a long time ago, there was 11 million people there. Okay? Now, what I'm getting at is, and, and by the way, there's one here in Spokane, and I'm going to be checking this out pretty soon here in the next couple days. I have the equipment to verify the frequency, which this one apparently is at 318 kilohertz, not megahertz, kilohertz, which again is down in that lower frequency range of mind control and those things that influence our bodies, okay? So you see where I'm going with this. That as they establish these and continue to install these all over the United States, that what they did is they put the people into a stupor. They put you into a hypnotic state. They put you into sleep. They put you to where they kept you from, from getting um, uh, the ability to process. Your, your cognitive ability was, is hampered. And with that, through the establishment over time, because this stuff uh, has been around for a very long time, so the 50s and the 60s and 70s is when this stuff was being implemented. And so they had all the time before cell phones, okay, Remember, cell phones didn't come along until the 80s to a point. Now, they did, they did establish it in Washington, D.C. I remember talking to the engineers. That was their test bed, their test ground. Um, and you might remember, they called it the molar roll of brick. The cell phone was huge. It was, you know, even some of the original ones were like a little briefcase because they weren't condensed. They didn't have the surface mount technology then. And only the... Uh, senators and congressmen and these guys were the ones who had them originally, including the CIA. In fact, I even had to deal with the uh, with Reagan's um, Secret Service transmitters in California when I was there because uh, some work I was doing for a company that made water beds. They used radio waves. That's how they seal it, you know, like a big old bladder. And it was interfering with, uh, with Reagan's C uh, Secret Service cell towers. And so that was 1979. So this stuff had been around, but it didn't go real public. And then eventually, as they perfected it and got more cell towers out there, they expanded it to the public and got away just from, from, from the congressmen and stuff. Now, <clears throat> if you remember, um, the last Kennedy died of brain and, uh, had a brain tumor, and he was known to be on that brick all the time. Okay, so brain cancer we know comes from that, and I know the of, I remember the story from the engineer in Tempe, Arizona, who was the guinea pig to carry around a five watt cell phone. And see, you guys are running around with ten milliwatts, maybe a hundred milliwatts maximum. And this was a five watt. Okay, I mean, you could, you could make popcorn pop with that thing, and, and so he ended, up, he ended up dying. But, but getting back to everything, the fact of it is, is they establish uh, these GWEM towers and put you into a stupor. They were busy uh, assembling the microwave towers, uh, those things of, of cell phone, cellular. That's what it means. Like when you look at a honeycomb and you see all the little places that the, the uh, bee puts the, the honey into, the honeycomb itself, that's a cellular, okay, cell. And so with all these all over the United States, that's why they call it cellular. Now, at the same time, Iridium, as I mentioned in the 80s, that I knew the guy that was one of the three of the founders of it, uh, as they were putting those up, you were in a stupor. And then cell phone comes along, and now, now, they, have what, now they have the ability to do the heterodyning. Now, what does that mean? Well, it now means with two frequencies, and I mentioned it the other day, 
that with the ELF, which can also bring thoughts into the mind, um, <clears throat> that it's, it's, ref it's a carrier. Okay, in it, then, as this amplifies, a as it resonates with your mind, then the microwave, as a carrier, can take that thought, which is a small microvolt uh, sensitivity that's projected when you're thinking, and then the microwave carries it and carries it to the cell towers. Now, with iridium, it can carry it to the iridium system of the satellites. Do you see how this all works? Now, it's only one, one part of the puzzle. Now you have smart meters. Now you have your own smartphones. Now you have your Wi-Fi's. So even though this technology may be used in remote areas for that, they don't need it because they've got, you're surrounded by all the technology here and the artificial intelligence, which basically, you remember sonar, boom, bing, right? When they, they hear something in the water, it bings back. Well, when they excite your brain and get that stimuli, they've done this to experiment to see you as an individual, to map you, to see your emotions, to see who you are, because we're all individuals, right? So in this is excitement and beaming back, they're able to use the artificial intelligence to map you and to understand you and to track you, your bio. Okay, so with it, then they can change your attitude, they can give you the emotions, they can make you hypersexual, they can make you uh, depressed, they can do all these crazy things. And the, what, what they've done, uh, as I mentioned with Motorola 2, that they were very advanced in their microprocessors long before Intel came along. In fact, Intel was a spinoff out of them, and that's a whole other story. I've talked about that. But, but the point of it is, is then when the uh, artificial intelligence is done, uh, with that, it turns it over to the Cray computers. And then the Cray computers are the workers that set the smart meters, the smartphones, the cell towers, the iridium system. It's the, hard, it's the worker guy. Okay, so this system is, is massive. It's incredible. Um, and again, there may be variances of what I'm saying. And there, are, there isn't just one agency doing it. There have been billions of dollars giving to all different agencies. And so they've, they've um, uh, paralleled. There are duplications of the system. So you may be dealing with one group of people and, and, and get that taken care of. You know, maybe you argue with them, but you still got the problem. That's because you got uh, agency B over here and agency C picking up where the other guys left off. That's how, how, how hermetically sealed we are into this environment. That's how bad that it is. Now, <clears throat> I, I want to mention, keep, I want to keep going here. Um, <clears throat> the, the ground base of, of GWAM basically is supposed to be 175 to 300, but as I, I said locally, the one in Spokane is like 318 kilohertz. So I'm going to take some of my equipment. I'm going to map it out. There's no reason that it needs to be transmitting all the time. It should, if it's doing anything, it should just be bursts of data. So I, I'm going to be experimenting and see when the, what that's all about. And again, this all affects the body, the mind, the influences. Again, can cause you to be sad, happy, angry, fearful, sleepy, and again, the apathy that we see in America is basically from this, along with you know, vaccines and chemtrail spraying and all this, which brings confusion, sickness, and again, that hypersexual. Uh, sexuality that we see as rapist molesters those who of homosexuality by the way okay now <clears throat> again these stations are basically out in the open but since the, those are the key 300 there's 200 missing so what what they've done is some of the cell towers are actually glim and I was telling Julie today that I've noticed one locally here that I believe is the one that's actually harassing me and it's deficient in its technology compared to the other cell towers. It doesn't need to be high-tech at microwave because it's actually at the low-end frequencies. So it's a dummy antenna is where it, really what it means, and it's only for that technology. I'm absolutely sure of that. Now, they can also piggyback on TV broadcast stations, radio broadcast station antennas. You'll see them, as I mentioned before, that's also being used, okay? Now, <clears throat> again, the, the ability to read your mind at long distances, this is how they're doing it. Whether you, whether you understand what I just told you, don't worry about it. 
Uh, look for yourself if you want to try and, and get that, okay, the heterodyne uh, theory, um, the carrier, but that is it. And and I was telling Julie that, that you can't do it unless there is that network, and I've, I've, I've got, I've, I got it now. I, I see what they're doing. All right. It's actually incredible. Again, this is the, the Tesla wave, okay, and, and by modulating it and, and beating it with another frequency, it's able to piggyback on microwave and microwave can go a very long distance. So there you go. All right, now, one of the things you'll notice that if you're being bombarded by this, one is your inability to think, you're confused, uh, you're having um, bathroom problems, uh, you, you're getting weird thoughts, you're getting angry, you're feeling high, you're feeling all kinds of weird things. But this is another thing that I've been noticing, too, is that uh, just like someone I was talking to recently here that was a guest on the show, um, they mentioned how they had a green thumb, and now they can't grow a plant for nothing. So vegetation, because of the radiation, uh, the, the energy that's being spewed out is very, very bad for vegetation. So if you've got plants and flowers and maybe even animals and things, and they're always sick, and, and you can't grow anything anymore because they die and they yellow out. That's what's going on because you're actually in that energy field produced by uh, harp is also a part of this. Harp is not just for weather; it's also for mind control, and along with uranium, along with cell towers. And again, they can manipulate and use the Wi-Fi's in your smartphones to do the very same thing. Now, also with iridium, as I was mentioning, nitrogen that in the optical white spectrum or even in the ultraviolet spectrum above where you can't see it any longer, they can literally cause, and they, they call it this because the nit see, see, oxygen is not just oxygen. You've got nitrogen, you've got helium, you've got argon, you know, and oxygen itself. You've got several different elements, and there's things called separators that separate these. This is where we get argon. This is where we get nitrogen when we go by nitrogen, okay, and CO2 and these other things. And by doing this particular technology, they can literally cause the nitrogen to form around your brain. And, and this then starves the, the neuron, the, the neural connections, the nerves from oxygen. All right? And, and what do we know What's very similar to that? The bends. The bends are the same thing. Okay? Hyperbaric chambers. That's why they have to put you back in a hyperbaric chamber. They put you back under pressure, and, it's, and it puts these things back and gets oxygen in there. So literally, because of this technology, we're, we're being damaged. We're being brain damaged. And that's why fetuses, that's why we were very concerned about that. All right? Now, along with that technology, again, hearing voices, having dreams and weird thoughts, seeing things, uh, again, perpetuated by all this. And, and you'll, you'll see uh, the 2.4 gigahertz, um, your, your Wi-Fi, and at 5, which is a, a harmonic of 2.4 in that range. And so, again, at 800 to 1.9 gigahertz for cell towers and Wi-Fis, these frequencies were selected specifically because it's what we basically resonate around, whether it's in the harmonics, whether it's the direct fundamental frequency, whether it is a combination of the two, these are what they have found, and they've known this for a very, very long time. Now, again, uh, one of the other issues, not just killing plants, and mention, and I mentioned what that's being done to your brain, and that Funicello, I always said Funicello, but it's Funicello, that you remember her? Um, uh, in the 50s and 60s and with the Mickey Mouse Club and then, and then you know, Walt Disney and then went on to do beach party bingo and all these other things. I remember I used to go to the drive-ins. I'm 60 years old. And, um, you know, she unfortunately had MS. All right, but we also know that Disney, that old scallywag, also was, was part of the monarch issue of mind control for children, for bringing them in, we know that many of the kids that entered into Walt Disney programs went on to be monarched, went on to be satanically richly abused, now are just a mess. 
And Annette wasn't any different. Now, God bless her. You know, um, I, I think, you know, she was just a victim, just like all the other kids. But unfortunately, one of the products of the mind control through radio waves is multiple sclerosis, which she had. Now, she supposedly died in April 8th of 2013. She was at age 70. But there was information in itself that that was a hoax and that it may have been three years later that she died. Now, what I'm saying is that there's a hundredfold increase in MS right now. So we're being bombarded by all this microwave, and that's one of the products, one of the damages that's being done to us. Now, let me bring some names out here. Now, I don't remember all these people. Some of them I do. Richard Pryor, obviously, we remember. He had MS, okay? Montel Williams, okay? Uh, Richard Cohen, uh, Neil Cavito, if you may know who he is, Cleve Burr, Terry Garr, right? Poor, poor thing. I know she's a mess. I hate to see her. I don't. Mean, I, I looked up. I didn't see that she had died yet. Uh, Joan Dyden, uh, Jack Osborne, Ozzy's son. Hmm. Now that's interesting, right? Because you know what that family's all about. Ann Romney, Clay Walker, uh, Tama Tama Hill. Okay. Uh, Dave Landers, okay, <clears throat> you, you know who he was? I remember Laverne and Shirley. Hello. Remember he was that little geeky guy? Okay, so children born with MS, born with MS. Okay, remember that's the myelin sheaths around the nerve, uh, around the cells of the brain uh, that are damaged. They disappear. They're going away. And this is the, the children are being born this way. Remember we warned about those children in the womb that they were targeting them? Again, a rise of hundredfold in this issue. Uh, this is unacceptable. Now, one of the control areas, you know, we talked about uh, the East Coast and Virginia and so forth, but what I found out, now I've talked about this with WWV, okay? This has to do with the universal coordinated time sent by radio wave that in the older technologies for ship to shore, for Navy, uh, for, for those that needed to set their clocks, they, it's referred to as the Atomic Clock Network, Boulder, Colorado, and uh, Hawaii are the two main stations for the United States. Okay? And, and what we're finding is that Boulder, Colorado has now been established as the command center for the Monarch MK cyclotronic Tele, uh, Tesla wave plot to control everyone. Now, I want to also, okay, Julie, they're hitting me. All right. All right, shy, okay, hang on a second. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as I call upon your warring angels now to encamp around me, that in the name of Jesus, anything sent to me, we send back to the sender. We will not tolerate, we will not accept this in the name of Jesus. Father, I am either your child or I am not. And I say that I am because I believe unto your Son. And with it then he lives in me. And if he's in me, then greater is he that is in them. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I will not tolerate, I will not accept this. All microwave, all radium, anything, anything of ELF, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, as the blood covers me, it is canceled and void and rendered to no effect in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whew. All right. Sorry, I lost it. My mind just went blank. All right. So we also know that in Denver, the Denver airport, that there is an underground facility. There are tunnels that run all over the United States. We know that Cheyenne Mountain, NORAD, again, this is all part of making Colorado, Denver area, Boulder, the new Washington, D.C. It will be the command center of the Illuminati when they bring everything down. Okay? So Washington, D.C. is going to be sacrificed. And so all the heads of state, those who, because remember, they want a continuity of government. And so that's what they've been doing all along, ladies and gentlemen. They've never had our best interest in mind. All right? <clears throat> so again, remember, this is the Tesla wave, also uh, the neurophone psychotronics, mind control, again, involving HARP, and uh, not just, you know, weather modifications. Now, 
the the hippocampus, you know, the hippocampal, you, you were talking about, Julie, and the pineal gland are the main focuses of that technology. Okay, in it then, as I, I mentioned with the, with the um, pituitary gland, that it's capable of producing both male and female hormones, estrogen and testosterone, and, and many others. Okay, we have the adrenals. So these can all be manipulated. They can all be controlled. This is one of the ways that I believe that men are being feminized. This is why we're seeing so many dykes out there. Sorry, but that's the truth. And believe me, I'm in Dyke Command Center here in Coeur d'Alene. All right. Now, again, this all falls under scalar technology, scalar energy. You can Google that. All right. So, again, the Earth's magnetic resonance that keeps us in harmony, they're messing with it. And it's not a good thing. Now, in coordination with demons, in coordination with curses, with, along with psychotronics, these are all combined together to be part of the end times. All right? I just got hit here, and I fought back. That's part of what I'm talking about tonight. We're taking the fight to them. We are not going to tolerate this. We are not going to allow ourselves, because we are heirs to the kingdom of God. We have the seal of God upon our forehead. Our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And in that, we have been given all power and all authority over the wiles of the enemy to trample on scorpions and serpents. That means insectoids. That means reptilians. That means the seed of Satan. And we are heirs to the kingdom through Abraham, seed grafted in through the blood of Jesus Christ, period. And it's time we start acting like it. So those in the Illuminati, you reptilian lizards, I hope, uh, I hope the temperature drops. You move really slow. Uh, as I've been mentioning, it involves Freemasonry, the Kabbalah, those things of Zionism. Believe me, Israel is, is going to be the other command center. Boulder, Colorado, Israel. Figure it out. Now, individuals like Pat Roberts, his 700 Club, I've been doing the Tuesday and Thursday for renouncing Freemasonry. All of these guys are in bed with this, this program. And Julie's going to, again, as I mentioned about that. Now, one thing that came to me, Julie, I'm going to be handing it over to you in a minute, um, <clears throat> is, is the dyes that are in tattoos, that, that are used for tattoos. Many of them come from China. Many of them come from other places uh, that are not manufactured here, and they're actually not food and drug uh, approved. Now, uh, the FDA is worthless anyways, and they're in bed with the Illuminati. They are the Illuminati, so they've been poisoning us for years but what I what I got today is a word of knowledge is I uh, the, the women here and I don't understand this um, I'm seeing the most horrible tattoos from the shoulder all the way down to the wrist on the right arm mostly the right arm and it can be you know an average woman to somebody who's who would be considered attractive to most people or they're just absolutely defiling in their body now, if you have a tattoo and you made a mistake, you can renounce it. You can, you can anoint it, okay, uh, and, and ask for forgiveness. But this is what I got. Nanotechnology is being incorporated into the dye. And that means these people who are getting these massive tattoos are having nanotechnology forced into underneath the skin. That's the word of knowledge that I got today. They may, I haven't even had a chance to check that out. I'm making the claim. Because if I guess if I was a, a scallywag, if I was a criminal, if I was a hoodlum that had billions of dollars to, to spend on entrapping and encasing uh, citizens, people, humans, that's one of the ways I would do it. So, so with the command of radio waves, what is that tattoo going to do to these individuals? All right, Jill, I'm going to bring you up here. Uh, that's frightening to me, absolutely frightening. Um, because, ladies and gentlemen, the churches did you a disservice. They did not teach you this. They told you you couldn't have demons. They didn't talk about the New World Order. They didn't teach you how to fight. They didn't teach you how to war. They didn't teach you about the ploys of the enemy, and so now you're caught with your pants down. And we're trying to do what we can to get you ready for the fight, and if we have to take it to them, that's what we're going to do. Isn't that right, Julie? You better believe it. 
And you know what? After uh, after Scott and uh, when he said he was being hit and he started praying and I went after it, um, what happened, Scott? Well, they backed off. Uh, I'm okay, okay. everyone's mom. I mean, man, they it was like like someone grabbed my brain and started squeezing. Okay, so you can see how that works. And one of the things that Scott had said last night on his show, I, I, I'm I not real up on the Christian thing because I was never brainwashed in the Christian thing, but he was talking about TVN, and I remember he had me uh, look at that logo, and he had me, uh, you know, tell him what all those symbols and everything meant. And I said, well, it's under the crown, the crown of England. That's TBN, the logo, is actually um, the crest, the crown, under England. So they belong to the queen, that station and that whole mess, right? So, I, I mean, I already did that. And, but then he was talking last night, and he mentioned it on there, and he said, he said that Julie had gone over that symbol. And then he was talking, and he mentioned something about 700 Club. And I immediately... I mean, I could have gagged on my tea. I was like, what did he just say again? And I, I back it up and I listen again. It was 700 Club. So I assumed, because he said PBN just prior to that, that this must be some kind of a show uh, on some television, maybe TBN television station. And I, I literally, uh, it was 2 o'clock in the morning, I know. I, I wanted to ring him, ring you up so bad. Because you, here I am thinking, this is some kind of Christian show, and these morons on there, I mean, the people that are listening have no idea what 700 Club means. I mean, we're going to, I'm going to tell you, the 700 is backwards, okay? It's, it's everything in Satanism, everything in the Luciferian, all the occult, we, we, when I was associated with that too, we do things backwards. Alistair Crowley wrote, let them learn to walk backwards, uh, read backwards, you know, listen to music backwards, everything like that. So it's actually 007 Club. What it is, it's the eyes, the two eyes of the reptilians and the seven, okay, the two eyes of the queen, the reptilian queen, and the seven is the umbrella that covers her. That's the, it goes over the O's and then down the side and it covers her. So those are the two eyes that are watching out for the queen, keeping an eye on her, uh, uh, protecting and guarding, right? So they were 007 in the movies and they worked for the crown of England and that's who they are. That's who that is. And the word club in itself is 333 times 2. That's what the word club is. So the club is the crown of England and Satan, 666. And it tells me that they are reptilians and that this 700 Club show is actually, um, was actually aired and made and thought up and created by the reptilian Crown of England, and it is under the overall authority of 666, the Beast. Lucifer. So I, I couldn't even believe that. I guess I guess it's because the churches have done a really good job of brainwashing people. But here's the thing: if I come up and I tell you, do you understand that's what that means? And you say, I don't believe what you have to say. That's what Tex Mars was saying on his last broadcast. People say, I don't believe that. Well, one of the reasons I don't tell people about this, and I don't and anybody I know around here. I don't is because they're, I know they're going to say that and they're in the churches and they're there. <clears throat> and so I just look, I mean, there's a couple of people I've tried to give them a couple of nuggets here and there. And immediately I don't, one, one was about the people being killed, the Falun Gong uh, in China. And I had said, you don't understand this was going on. This is terrible. And the guy goes, this is a Christian man. Oh, that stuff goes on all the time in China. Never, not even a, I mean, not even, not even any emotion that this is happening to these poor people. So there's nothing you can really say. So that's why I don't bother telling anybody that goes to a church, what's the point? Because they're going to say they don't believe it. And I, I, you know, I wonder why, why I have all this education as a, an occult forensic expert. That's my job 
and and yet you you have these people that have an IQ of seventy five, and they literally uh, have no respect for my degree, my education, for what I do, and that if a law enforcement agency is willing to hire me to do a case or to look over crime scene photos, um, excuse me, that's going to go to court, and what I testify to is going to be in a deposition, and it's going to go to court. And I may have to show up in court to show what, to to verify what I came up with. If a law enforcement agency is going to employ me for my uh, abilities, you would think that a person of minimal IQ, sorry, but it's true, would actually think, well, you know, that is her degree, that's her specialty, maybe, you know, there's something to it. But no, and so I don't even bother sharing this with anybody. The only time I talk about this stuff is on the show, Scott, because they they don't even want to know the truth. They don't want it. They like it just the way it is. But I will tell you, all of you, that that symbol, the 007, and I did go over this before, is Tubal Cain. The seven is the Tubal Cain. That's the Cain, okay? So it's. And then, the, and then, like I said, the word club in itself is 333 times 2, which is 666. Now, obviously, if you use the word club in connection with your whatever, you know, this is the 007, Tubal Cain, the whole thing. But, I mean, it's just a word to most of us. But for them, when they paired it with the 007 and the meaning behind it, you, and then the crest of TBN, the, the, the symbol, is the crown of England. So I'm, I'm telling you, Scott, I could get on my tea. I couldn't even believe it when you said that. I had to rewind and listen again because I downloaded it because I couldn't believe what I just heard you say. And then I thought, well, maybe it's a show on there. So I'm glad that you called today and I was able to actually verify that because you guys need to understand, hey, if there's any more shows on those channels, please email me. I would... Please, I beg you, email me and give me the names of them, because I have no clue what this all is about, you know, and I still don't. So if you have any any other shows that are actually named that you know that come on those those channels, please let me have, send me the name of them and who's the whoever's the one that teaches it, put their name in there too, because Scott, I can. I mean, I, all I had to do was use 700 Club. I didn't even have to do any, I didn't have to work anything up on that. I mean, I just know what it means. But I was amazed. I mean, I'm still sitting here like a little kid amazed that people would actually listen to that and they wouldn't even bother to check into, well, what, what does it mean? And the dude that you said runs it was on the cover of Time Magazine, you said, doing the lion's paw. Now, why would you put, like, your, you know, put your hand over your heart and then, or whatever, but you put the lion's paw? Why would you do that on the cover of Time magazine unless you're, you know, a mason and you're showing who you are? And by the way, I will guarantee you that every person that's on that show, on any of those shows on there, I will guarantee you they're reptilians. I'm, I'm going to guarantee they're reptilians or they're hybrids. And by the way, folks, did you know that the top guys in the Illuminati, they don't have demons. You guys need to get away from the demon possession stuff. Walk away. Come on. Lose the demon word. Because y'all, everybody talks about, oh, they got demons. No, they don't. They have a button on their belt. And they'll push the button, and their human cloaking will disappear. And you will have a seven-foot lizard standing in front of you, 400 pounds, about they have a button that they push, and they, they're not, there's no such thing as demons. These are real creatures all by themselves. They don't have no demons. That's the sons and daughters of the fallen angels that were here, and they're the spirits of. These are not, they don't have demons, okay? And when they push the button, they will, their, their human cloaking will drop, and you'll see them for who they are once that that frequency is turned off, like Scott said. And so this is the, the, the Illuminati, the big guys, they're not human. They have a, if you could get to one of them and push that button on their belt, 
um, or, or wherever they have it on the side, you would absolutely see, boom, right there. They would lose the, the human, that human frequency. What you, what you see as human would be gone. And you'd have a seven and a half, eight foot, you know, 400 pound lizard standing in front of you. It's not demons. So lay off the demons. They're individuals, just like you and me. But they're reptilian. And then they have, Scott, remember that one news person who was going to be asked, you know, and and they pinned the camera to her, and she had something strapped to her leg on the inside of her thigh. She quickly covered it up. That's one of those machines that literally, uh, it's to the inside of the thigh. It actually cloaks them as a human. It's technology. If she turns that off, she'll be a six-foot lizard sitting there, seven-foot lizard sitting there in the chair. Remember that, Scott? Yeah, it was actually quite a shock. Um, you know, she looked like she was adjusting herself with her skirt up, but in reality it was some kind of device that was strapped to her leg. So, yeah, you never know. Yeah, so um, I've had several emails about people asking me about the, you know, demons. If they're, you know, oh, so they're just demonized. No, 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 no. <laughs> Everybody needs to drop the demon word, man. These are real entities. They have real bodies, and they're not demons. They don't even, these reptilians don't even have demons in them. They're not, they're not demonized. They are an individual creature, okay? So get rid of the demon word. But what I noticed is that the higher-ups that are all reptilian, there is no human, then you have the next level and the next level, and those are all hybrids. You'll have the human-reptilian hybrids. So you all of the top guys are actually reptilian. I mean, pure blood reptilian. And they just have the little poking thing. The other ones uh, have some human DNA mixed in with the reptilian. And so, the, but they have to drink a lot of blood and eat a lot of human flesh. And it has to be children. It cannot be adults because they got to have that pure, um, that pure blood, right? got to be without all the vaccines and the toxins that that's what the reptilians say too we can't take you adults because you have all these toxins in your blood and flesh from a life of living here on this planet which we've polluted and so we don't we can't stand the taste of you so we just go after the children so this is what they do but anyway when you were doing this frequency thing I was. I, I actually remember that in the, in the things that I learned prior to this, you know, since I knew Jesus, one of the things I learned was that we can actually, and it's done all the time, so you can't say it's not possible. And it's not demons. Again, there's an ability to know you will have no fear and to know that you could drop, jump off a 20-level 20, 20 building and nothing will happen to you. You can jump, roll, get up, and keep walking. Now, that should kill anybody or at least bust them up. But but we are doing that with the technology that we have. It, all it is is mind control. They like how they split me and different parts of me to program other people. That person, when, when you are in, that, in the other person, the other mode, you could jump off a 20-level building and nothing would happen to you because in that personality that you have, there's no fear, there's no apprehension, there's no nothing. You just do it and you know you can do it and you keep going. And this is what happens to all people who are trained in these programs that we would just be told to jump off something and we would just do it and nothing would happen. That's what's happening with all of these people that are in these MK programs, super soldiers, what have you. So, it's not demons that are helping you. It is an ability to, you see, we've been told we have to have doctors. We've been told our body is fragile. We've been told all of these things, and they're not true. They're only true because we are brainwashed to think it's true. We can do amazing things. You know those reptilians that always say, um, you guys can create and we can't. That's why you work for us, because we don't have the ability to create. Well, I didn't understand that, okay, until later on. And then I started saying, okay, if they say 
that we have the ability to create and they don't. What does that mean? Well, I figured it out. We can create our own reality, but we let them create one for us and believe in it. If we all quit believing in this reality and said no more, we, I, we don't need doctors. We don't, we're not going to break every time we jump off a sidewalk. We don't need you. We disengage from everything that you've told us. Our world would drastically change because our belief system would no longer be invested in poison. And that would change our body's ability to do whatever. Because you know what? You tell me why someone who has, uh, my, my, okay, father-in-law, for example, what, what our grandfather-in-law, what did he do? He fell off of a ladder up in a high school gym, broke his neck, and told him he'd never walk again. So he was in a wheelchair, paralyzed from the neck down. Told him he'd never walk, in, walk again. In three months, he was moving everything. And within uh, a year, he was up walking like nothing ever happened and going right back. And they look at his neck and nothing changed. Nothing changed in his neck. Nothing. They couldn't explain it. Because he said, I will not sit here. I won't do it. And he, by the way, was some kind of pastor at some kind of church. But he said, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing this. And he got up and walked. And what about all these people who have some disease, and they say, well, you have this, and you're going to die in six months. No, I'm not. I don't have that. And the next thing you know, these people have nothing, no disease. Why is that? Because their mind is strong enough, we can create that which is in us. We can do that. We have the power to, and if we didn't, why would Jesus tell us that even our thoughts condemn us? Even our thoughts. If you think about murder and you think about killing someone, you've already done it. Why? Why? Because we have that power with our mind. They don't. And that's why they come after us to make us work for them. We have to seek the light, the true light. What does it say in John? That Jesus is the light of the world, came into the world, the light of the world. We have to seek him. We have to go after him because you know what? That's where we get the ability to think outside the box. He's the one that does it. The Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ will show you how to come out of the box and start thinking, what makes me me, by the way? is something that they don't have. I'll give you another clue. Reptilians and dra- in the graves, the re- the reticuli, all them. You want to know another reason why they hate us? See, that we have a tri tri um tri body. We have three different way, three different components to us. Spirit, soul, and body. Well, they don't. And according to what I was told, they did have, but they lost whatever the component was, they lost one or two of the components and they can't, that's the only way that you can get to heaven. You can't, and it's not, remember what I told you, Scott, a long time ago when I first started with you, that it's not, it's not that you, God won't let you in because he doesn't love you. It's because you can't cross the dimensions. You actually cannot do it. That, that body, that spirit, that soul cannot actually go into the, that dimension. They can't do it. They can't cross into the up in the upper dimensions. So what do they have to do? They have to use us. And that's why they would have us call the, you know, all of the, the psychics and the humans that have psychic ability to call in the ancient ones because they can't transverse the other dimensions, the higher dimensions. They can't do it. They have to have humans do it for them. So that's why they did it. So now I'm starting to understand why they went after psychic humans, psychic humans, because that's what they had to have. And so, you know, Scott, it really, I mean, everything is just coming exactly, it's all making sense from what I know of reptilians and why they can't transverse the, the, the dimensions, why they have to have a psychic that can bring the ancient ones in and how come they can't do it. And I also uh, found out that you can't, they cannot go back up. See, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to perfect their DNA because they have DNA too, folks. Don't, they're not invisible things floating around. Stop with the whole invisibility floating around thing. Everybody thinks they're like ghosts or something. They have bodies, and they can, but see, they have 
the codes to unlocking DNA. They know how to manipulate matter and not be seen. Do you understand? They know how to do it. We don't, but they do. But the problem is they're lacking a component that can get them into higher dimensions. They can't get back up. So that's why they're using humans, because they're trying to find a way to get that component so they can go back up. So now I understand, Scott, what's going on. And the frequency is the way that you control everything, the grass, the people, the I, everything, everything is controlled by the frequencies and the electromagnetic. So now I get it. So there you have it. And, you know, people say, oh, well, don't say the light. That's new age. Actually, if you're going to say that's new age, you're full of crap. Because the Bible says Jesus is the light. I read it for myself. So you might as well say that the Bible's wrong and the Bible's new age. Because it says right there, Jesus is the light of the world. So that's the dude we need to follow because he's the one that showed us that he came back from the dead, he actually walked through walls, and he could ascend to heaven. Now we know. That's why our body can't go up. That's why we have to leave this physical body behind, because we can't get up there like this. And by the way, we can't even move out of this dimension whenever I would astral travel. I did it in my spirit. I left my body and could walk around, drink water, eat food, all that stuff on the, in another dimension that this body can't go. It's too dense, too heavy. It cannot go. So that's exactly why this body has to stay here. I get it now, Scott. You know, um, it, it's interesting because, <clears throat> yeah, everything's on a resonance. Everything's on a frequency, period. Um, when you cause infrared to be introduced and you start warming things up, the molecules can start moving around quicker and run into each other. That causes friction. That causes heat. But when you think about white light or those things visible, otherwise the visible spectrum to us, that's from 390 to 700 nanometers. Uh, it doesn't mean anything to a lot of people, but that's the, the range of our visual. Now, just because, in, in fact, uh, I, I was just thinking about how I was explaining to you today, Julie. So, so listen to me, okay? That's a small amount of the spectrum that our eyes can see. That means there are things above it and below it that we can't see. So just because we can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So let's look at an AM broadcast station or, or radio. At the lower end, down towards the end, like 88, uh, if we only lived in that environment, in that frequency range, and that's all we could hear, that's all we could deal with, then, then we would not know about the upper end of the dial. There could be other life. There could be other things going on, but only because we're bound to the lower end of the dial, we don't know they exist, but yet they do. So if we have the ability to move that dial up and start listening to the other parts of that band spread, the spectrum at a higher end, then we could start hearing the other broadcasts. We could start experiencing those other things. And so we're limited and bound as humans in our human form to this. Now, I believe from the fall of the garden, along with the pineal gland and, and the others, that there's been uh, a, a certain hold on us, okay? And we also see where Satan tried to refer, tried to get us into being like gods. Now, we may also be under, quote, a curse, meaning that, that what even God allowed us to have is still being hampered and taken away because of the corruption of Satan. Now, we have to be very careful because we're warned about divination and sorcery and clairvoyance not to do such things. So when those people try to venture into what they have, then the demons come along, there are demons. What Julie's saying is, is applying not to say that everything is, but the demons, when they come in and they corrupt, then they get the people to go into the new age and they start doing the spiritualism in cahoots with the demons instead of in those things that were given to them by God solely. And then there's a, there's a, a crossover. So, again, just remember that, that we only see a small spectrum there's the infrared and then the ultraviolet at both ends. 
and we only see what's in the middle, which is hardly anything. Then we have, like again, we have sound waves, we have radio waves, uh, we have gamma, we have uh, uh, again X-ray. All this stuff that's out there is part of the spectrum. So yes, everything is a quote uh, frequency, which in itself, when it's being in its process, produces an energy, produces work, horsepower, wattage, uh, candle power. There's always something that's exerted. When it's very minute, it's referred to as joules. How many joules within a certain period of time because it's very small and measurable. Now, uh, I will also say there, there has been an increase of fear. Some of the people that I, some of the calls I've been getting, some of the people I've been working with, the spirit of fear is absolutely ingrained to them so badly that it's going to be some time to get them out. Now, the only way that fear is going to take a hold is if you allow it. There are those that have been in instances, and I've even experienced it myself, that when you feel the Spirit coming on to you, you reject it. As the Scripture says, rebuke the devil and he will flee. So if it's taken you, then somewhere along the line it came in through whatever port of entry because of whatever sin then in that, then that's the home base for other issues of anxieties, of depression. Now, again, this is what this spectrum of psychotronics is doing, is messing with the mind to give the influences or the thought of fear, which we have not been given a spirit of, and or mimicking demons in or the combination of the two. So this just this uh, is going to be, this end times is going to be, quite interesting. Now, I'm setting that up to say this, and that I was given uh, a news article uh, about a Florida State University student, 19 years of age, uh, fatally stabbed a husband and wife. I think this took place in their garage or ended up in the garage. And then a neighbor who tried to intervene and stop, he was hurt too. But this, this uh, young college student who had no priors, no arrest, nothing to show any, anything of this type of history, that when the police, uh, the sheriffs showed up, he was actually standing over the man and biting his face off. He actually took chunks out. He, was, he, had, he had bitten him several times. He was basically eating his face. Now, I mentioned, now whether you want to call this a drug issue, um, I, I, I'm, I don't believe it is. I believe that there is either through mind control, through demonization, through those curses, that as this increases, now you notice this is happening a lot in Florida. This is not the first time. I've told you a couple of others in the past uh, that have been given to me by the same individual that are horrifying. So there's some bad juju there in, in, uh, in Florida. Okay, we also have Santeria, we also have Voodoo, we have, uh, you know, all the things. Plus, I believe that it is also a test bed for mind control. And he was also reported as making uh, animal sounds, and that he, he too, Julie, had superhuman strength, and it took every officer to contain him. Now, I'm actually surprised they didn't just shoot him. Um, so whatever, however that worked out, but uh, this, this, this is a terrible tragedy. And unfortunately, it won't be the last. This is why we need to be ready emotionally, spiritually. Now, let me tell you something. Um, uh, the neighbor, one of the first things I would have done is grab my gun. To have seen, to witness, to have known of such acts, I would have, I would have settled it with a firearm. That didn't take place. So, so why people don't have guns is because they don't want you to have guns, and they've programmed you to think that by calling 911, which takes an average response time of 23 minutes, a whole lot of you know what can happen then. And I, I mentioned to someone the other day, I said, if you were driving along and you saw somebody assaulting a child, I mean smacking them and hitting them and kicking them, what would you do? And they said, this was a man. He said, I would call 911, and I just looked at him. I said, you know what I'd do? I'd slam on the brakes, and I'd come flying out of that car. I'd make sure the individual that was harming that child stopped immediately. You see how we've been programmed? We let somebody take care of business. 
Now, we originally had what was referred to as a militia. We still do. We have uh, the Lightfoot here in northern Idaho of militia. That was the, the basic defense against those things of foreign and domestic, if it gets out of hand, to be their, their first response, like the Minuteman. Now, over time, the government has programmed and, and influenced and brainwashed and got us into thinking that we have to have this law enforcement, we have to have this and that. You know, um, now this, all the agencies are going to be turned on us. The Department of Homeland Security has them. They're under the control, again, with, with, the, with the Monarch and the MK Ultra and, and all of this stuff that's in place clearly is not our friend. They're not here to, to help us. Okay, so just be ready for more of this. Now, <clears throat> I also believe that there is, is going to be involving, now whether the student was really the student, I don't know, I have no idea. But I also think that there's going to be hybrids. I think that just like the article that Julie was talking about where there are creatures, and we see this in, the, in, in uh, Revelation, uh, that there will be those beasts that will be released. Now, the word beast doesn't mean animals. Could mean all kinds of things. So who knows what we're going to be dealing with? So so uh, just just be ready for it. So, and and I'm going to hand it back to you, Julie. But before I do that, I, again, I want to thank everyone who who's been supporting uh, the Tuesday nights, and then of course Monday, Wednesday, Thursdays here for Tinfoil Hat Club, uh, because we can only be on the air because of you. And I want to thank you for that. So, Julie, go ahead. Yeah, and you know what, Scott, I was if you if you can explain too, because I found it very interesting when you were explaining um the uh, uh the different resonance or the different frequencies of each human and some have a higher frequency than another and that that gave me the answer as to why they are they sought me out over other people to could you say why me? Why did this happen to me? Well now I get it because I was always very psychic as a child, and it was not a demonic gift. It was given to me by God, and I know that since I met you. But, of course, the demons hijacked it, and they and I used it thinking I was doing something good, but yet I was using it in the wrong way. So I, I understand that that's why they targeted me, and from very young, my mother was also psychic, and my daughter was before we met Jesus, got delivered, and I, you know, I prayed over her and had closed all that up. But, I mean, as far as the demonic end of it. So I know that it's in my line. It's in my bloodline to be that way. And that's exactly why they targeted me. Now I understand why there was a woman across the road up there with a device pointed at my house every day for months on end. Why there's uh, two people parked outside in front of my house. Uh, watching my house. Now I get it. I get it. They're, they've been tracking me when I lived in another state. The same thing would happen with a black truck that would go by really slow and almost stop in front of my house. This would go on and on and on. So now I'm understanding what they've been doing is tracking me. And it is that higher frequency or whatever it is that I emit, they can track me by that alone was what the article said. And I would really like for you to explain that to me because it sure gave me a lot of answers and it may help other people as well. Well, um, radiation, you know, one of the things that we have here in the United States and throughout the country is the ability to monitor uh, nuclear uh, bombs. And the reason is, is because uh, the plutonium and those things have a signature. It gives off a frequency. It gives off a pattern that is distinguishable. It's intelligible. It, you can read it. You can define it to something and say it is this type of ore, its content, its quality, uh, and, and, and even where it was from uh, because they map it. They, they, the, the signature that it has of its spectrum, its bandwidth, its frequency is documented. Just like if you were to buy gold, um, let, let's say if you go to a gold dealer, and you have something to sell, and you're a thief, and you've stole it from a semiconductor company because they use gold and silver in their processes. They put in it what's called tracer metals. When they put this in the metal, then it's always in there because most of us don't have the ability to refine it to, to, to the next quality 
if you're just melting it down, you don't really get rid of the tracer metals. And so there's an impurity in there, and that impurity is a signature to track that gold in case it's ever stolen. So if you go to a gold dealer and then let's say he buys it and he goes and runs a test on it, he'll find that it's actually semiconductor gold and then he most likely turn you over to the FBI. Okay, so everything has a signature. Everything has a definition of what it is. Now, um, <clears throat> blood type is also sought after and, and blood type can be um, a hindrance to psychotronics. Now, the mineral content and the DNA structure of your blood uh, is, is a basis of how, it, how your body reacts to radio waves. Now, if you have, uh, let's say, your, your pineal gland and, and those things that are part of the transmitter, like the transducer that we talked about for being in the different spectrum uh, uh, that would be closer to, to EOF, that's measured in cycles per second, okay, not necessarily kilohertz or megahertz, because your brain waves only the the speed is really only that of the speed of sound, okay, not of not like the speed of light like electricity is, okay. So your brain, though as incredible as it is, is not as fast, but it's certainly fast enough to do what we do. And, and what they have found is those that have that ability to, to sense things of the spirit, that their brain actually operates at a higher cycles per second. The alpha, beta, theta, gamma, those things of the brain, how they interact. There's a different signature, okay? And <clears throat> is there a correlation to the blood, like an O negative? Apparently there is. And we've, we've talked about how that they've been trying to, to weed out those who have an O negative. Now, I'm O negative. I've been hit by all kinds of electricity. I've been what would have, should have killed people. I've told Julie, uh, you know, I don't know, 20 stories. <laughs> I mean, I was quite a, quite a stumbling block uh, in my old days. But um, the point of it is I'm still here. Now, I am sensitive to, to radio. I am sensitive to magnetic. Now, it bothers me, it irritates me, it puts me on edge, it may calm me more than anyone else, depending on what's ever happening, but I recover from it, I dust myself off, and I move on, where other people doesn't happen to. If you've ever seen someone tasered, um, it's a horrible thing, actually. It's very painful. Um, picture yourself doing 19 sit-ups per second for five seconds or whatever length of time that, that could, so you can imagine your muscles are expanding, contract, expanding, contracting 19 times a second, which is the typical pulse of a taser. Okay. Typical. Now that that's beyond what our body was really intended to do. And so it is so our, our neuro, our neurons, our, our neurological system locks up and we can't communicate to our brain. It's kind of like, um, if you listen to loud music and you've got someone in front of you who's talking, you see their lips moving, but you don't hear a thing because you've got loud music going. That's what's happening. The message is not getting from your brain to your, to your legs, to your arms, and you lock up and you fall over. Okay? And it's very painful, and plus you're, you're expanding, contracting 19 times a second. Now, with that cycle they found that that's the best to interfere with the body's brain communication, okay? So when, when you have somebody that is in a different, um, a different range of the frequencies naturally, not demonically, then that cycles per second can be determined because the, the, the signals of the brain, by the way, are, are not, uh, the, the superconduction of it is not that of electrical impulses, but the energy that comes from it gives the effect of electrical impulse. So it's a magnetically induced voltage, but it's more of a, of a light spectrum energy between neurons, between, between the brain cells. And that is detectable at short ranges. So if you have somebody that's within a certain distance and they have devices, they literally can tell 
whether you are potentially more psychic or not. I mean, it's a little more complicated, a little less complicated, depending on how you want to look at it. But that's the general of it. And so you can be weeded out. You can be weeded out at birth. And in fact, Julie, I sent you a video of some gal that I was trying to watch, and I'm not quite sure about her yet. But she was kind of saying the same thing, that she was actually implemented as a nurse into hospitals to be there at birth to pick the kids out. And and so then they get brought into the program. And IQs and, you know, you can have a, an average IQ and have street smarts. You can have an I, high IQ and and go to zipper your pants and hang yourself. You know, it's all who we are. It's all what we do with what, what's been given to us. And and I really believe and that that the vaccines, those things that are done to children, are intent to keep them suppressed from being who God had made them to be. Do you understand that? So you, you need to remember that like during World War II and you know from, from the nineteen hundreds on up, there was this massive uh, uh, increase of technology. Now we know that some of that came filtering down through uh, the fallen angels, but at the same time, there were people who who were doing all these incredible things. Um, you know, like l- let me just default to ham radio operators. The reason that we have the radio spectrum that we have to work with. Get this, okay? So in the 20s and 30s in these areas. They commercially did not comprehend the worth of these bands. They actually thought they actually called them trash bands. Otherwise, the shortwave frequencies, those bands that ham radio operators used, and so they didn't want them because they thought they were useless. They thought, give them to these garage tinkers because they're fighting for some frequencies. Just give it to them, and we'll move on to the good stuff. Well, it turned out on the long run uh, they made a horrible mistake, and so the um, government, uh, the, the Federal Communications, which was not established at the time, which was under Congress, um, gave us those bans. And so there's a worth in the whole spectrum. Okay? God didn't make junk. What he made is an amazing thing. And so all, f- all frequencies, the full spectrum, from sound waves to, to, to light waves, to electrical, to, to radio waves, to to gamma, to x-ray, all, all the way up through, they, they, they play a part in everything. They play a part in life. Uh, the Photosynthesis, okay, photons, th- those things that bring life into us. Yeah, so, so again, their ability to, to control, their ability to, to suppress uh, is what they're doing. And, and in it, they're choking off the life of this planet. And thank you, Father God, thank you, Jesus Christ, for saying that those who try and destroy the world, that he personally will destroy, because we are part of his life. Do you understand that? We're put on this earth, so we're a part of it. And that means those who are coming after us, the ones that have done destruction, they will pay for those who have already perished and will perish. So I hope that makes sense to you, Julie, if that works out. Go ahead. Yeah, it it does. And for any of you guys out there that are 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 um you know, um victims of of MK Ultra like myself and 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 were taken and bad things done to you and everything, understand and when you were asked like there was a man who came into my school in elementary school and I his name I never forget his name, he was German and his name was Voorhees. And he was a ger- big, tall German guy, and he was bald, you know, bald, like he shaved his head. And he came in, and he said, the school's asked me to come in and to to test you. And I said, okay. So they put me in a room by myself, and this went on for three days, that I would be in this room by myself. And he would ran me through just tons of testing, pictures, very, very complicated and black just like drawn in pencil or like, you know, black and small cards. And, and it was, you had to look at all this, these lines running everywhere in the scene that was going on in this very complicated picture on this small card. And you'd have, 
you know, three, and then you'd have six, and then you have eight, and then you have ten, and you had to put them all in the sequence, and you just had seconds to do it. I mean, it was like you, you, you got like ten seconds or something to put it all together, and I remember thinking, what? what are they doing? Why do I have to, you know? And so this, they, they ended up calling my, my, my dad and speaking to him and saying, well, she needs to be put up a, a couple of grades because she's way advanced. So they were going to take me and put me in a junior high school, take me out of elementary and put me in a junior high school. Well, I had already gone through first, second, third, and fourth in two and a half years instead of four. So I was this, like, really little kid already in the fourth grade in two and a half years. So that that's – that, and I remember him coming and doing this, and I never could figure out why they were doing this. So I'm thinking, what – you know, but see, that's what they were doing. And then they told my dad, you know, she, you know, and the principal and all that stuff, you know, she has a very high IQ and, and um, so this was the stuff they would do to me, and I never understood it. I never understood why they would come in and test me like that. And so, you know, it makes sense to me. Now I understand. All these things started making sense to me and understanding and and Las Vegas, Nevada, and then how come there's always somebody outside my house or standing across the road or something, and it's just creepy. And so if you're like me and you're one of those kids and you have these things happening to you, at least the way he explained it with me being psychic, it, it, and now I understood how they targeted me from birth. How did they know? Because this stuff that was done to me, this this splitting and trauma was before I was even three years old is when this stuff was done. So that's when he said that, that when their babies are born, now I understood. I understood why that started from day one because they knew when I was born, that I had that ability. And so, you know what, Scott, if this helps anybody, uh, I, I will be so happy because, you know what, there's a lot of people that have been traumatized and things have been done to them, not, not just because you had bad parents. I mean, seriously, like MK Ultra crap, okay? And, and you, your life doesn't make sense. And you think to yourself, why me? Why me? Why, why of all people did this have to happen to me? And I, what Scott did for me when he explained that technology of, of, of you know, the higher frequency with, you know, with me because I'm psychic and, and I had all this ability, now I and my IQ is through the roof. Now I get it. I know why they targeted me. And it makes it easier to understand what's happened. So if, if you, you know what, Scott, it was really, I think a lot of people that, that will listen to this are going to come back later. They're going to think to themselves, and they're going to come back later and say, you know what, that everything that she said and you said, these things were happening to me, and I never understood why me. You know, Scott, a lot of people say that. Why me? How come this has to happen to me? And I remember very strange things happening to me. Um, deer would run out in front of me and then just crisscross across the road, right, and just jumping back and forth and hanging out in the road. And I mean, just like they were being controlled, you know, like robots. And I, it was just strange events all down through my life. And so I, I really think that this is may answer some questions for people because you know what? This targeting frequency, mind control, and like Brother Dave up and up, you know, where he lives, you know, he's being targeted. I mean, it's, it's horrible what they're doing to him. It's horrible. I mean, he's got chips in his legs. I mean, he sent that metal detector over his whole body, and what happens? They light up everywhere, you know. When he was in the military, stands to reason, right? stands to reason that he's, they, who knows how many of these guys that are coming home right now, I guarantee you every veteran, every single one of them, from way back to even now, we could run those things over them, Scott, and I'll bet you they're loaded. I, I would bet that. Wouldn't you think so? Oh, there's no question. Absolutely. Um, it, it, again, I, I was talking about tattoos. Just in itself, because of nanotechnology, all this chipping now can be so mi- minute, so small, uh, that, that it can be in, uh, put in that way. You can ingest it. You can breathe it in. 
so we're just in a whole new world that that uh, this this grain of rice sized uh, chip, uh, that's old technology. Uh, oh, you know the other thing <clears throat> too is. Now I haven't verified this, but I, I'm going to I'm going to believe it because uh, I've I've dealt and known of those who were what we call rats during Vietnam, uh, that tunnel rats that would go into the Vietnam Vietnam uh, Vietnamese uh, caverns, caves, tunnels, and it was usually a smaller individual that would fit into the holes because a, a lot of these actually were manned by women. Uh, and were known to be quite killers of our troops. And so they would send someone down into it. Well, what they did is they did the first uh, generation cochlear um, uh, communication. So these guys wouldn't have any radios with them. They were actually implanted. And it was they, the, they were the ones that actually were sent down into the, the holes. And while they were in there, they could communicate. And they could, so they could hear commands and they could speak and give commands. Now, when that program was over, they, they discovered the worth of it, the New World Order. Okay, remember CIA, that was, whole thing was a CIA operation anyways, that many of them um, had uh, absolute emotional issues. Now, it's very understandable because of the post-traumatic that would have been introduced from them even going into that situation. I can't even imagine crawling into a hole, one confined space, but but uh, traps, booby traps, uh, you know some some uh, someone in there with a knife ready to cut your throat, get a sh- get shot. Uh, snakes, they would put snakes in there that would only be released when you trip something. Um, I mean that would traumatize anybody. But what they did is they since they had the implants, they continued that experiment. And some of you may know what I'm talking about. Some of you may know people, and they they basically drove most of them crazy put them into to mind control through hearing the voices, would not stop, and so they then became the guinea pigs in the experiments, even though Vietnam was over with. See, th- this is who we're dealing with, ladies and gentlemen. People, you know, we, we have men and women who serve this country honorably, even though those things that were implemented may not have been of honor, they, they answered the call, and then they were used horribly like this. See, this is who is running this country. And, and they continued from there. Once that was de- determined to be successful, that's really where the, this thing expanded from there. The other thing, too, was that if you were in a jungle and you were a sniper and you needed to move along from one place to another very slowly, very quietly, that was the perfect communication technology. So you see how far advanced they were? Do you understand that? So, you know, they can show all the types of radios they had then. Motorola was a big part of it. But they had this other end of technology that was only used in black op operations. So this is nothing new. It's been around a very, very long time. So, anyways. So we're down to about 30 minutes, Julie. Well, where, do you, where do you want to go from here? Uh, well, um, don't forget about the Luciferian holidays that are coming up. And... Um, you know, if we can pray against, pray against, pray against. And also, um, I've had, as you guys may well know, and if you didn't hear, I had uh, major problems with my, my technology, and I lost all my data, everything that I could, you know, it was gone. And I do suspect someone was in my house uh, whenever I was not here. I very rarely go anywhere but I do suspect someone was in my house because there was there was something specific taken and it was um it was something that had uh orders on it like uh for necklaces and bracelets and the people's names you know I have that you know write it in paper and but I had it in my also in my contacts and my memos and all that stuff which I had uploaded Anyway, it, uh, all of that is missing, and all my data was missing. And it's not, they don't, they can't explain how it happened, of course. They, oh, I don't know, it's Verizon. I don't know how that happened. Oh, gee whiz, you know. But anyway, um, so if you have not heard from me, it's because I don't have your information anymore. I can't get a hold of you. You, you, you have to call, you have to reconnect with me because they literally wiped out everything that I had. And you know, it's really funny because, um, 
uh, I, whenever I take my service dog with me, that would be the only reason most people wouldn't come in because she's big. But when I go somewhere, if I take her with me, that just leaves a three-pound chihuahua. So I'm quite sure that didn't disturb them at all. And we did come home and find a door unlocked. and op- that It wasn't standing open, but it was unlocked. So that kind of, you know, I know we locked it when we left, but it was it was actually unlocked. And like I said, with the people standing across the road, staring over here and pointing something at my house and two people uh, right there, uh, in front of my house, and as soon as they saw me see them, they 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 went the opposite directions and just took off like were like they were at the starting line of the you know uh, one of those races, professional races. So I know that they that they have been watching me and messing with me, and I I do suspect they've been in my house as well. So if you ordered something, you you need to call me or, or text me or something. Because I don't have your information anymore. And um, so anyway, and Scott knows I've been trying to get a new system that I got to work to replace the old one. And it won't even turn off. I can't get it to work. So <clears throat> they're messing with everything. I get something new, they mess with that. <clears throat> so I guess we need to start praying, Scott, uh, against them messing with our technology even because they're, you know, it's like everybody else has a cell phone and they take it for granted that they can just pick it up and use it. And I don't have that luxury because they end up targeting my, my cell phone, my emails or whatever. Just they, all they do is wipe stuff out, you know, and they, you know, folks, I want you to understand. It doesn't matter who you are and it doesn't matter where you are. They can hear you, see you, uh, Everything that that you hear and you see, I don't, you don't have to be microchipped anymore. Okay, they don't need that. They can they have the technology to just peek into your house and see everything and hear everything without you ever having any technology. And I just so happen to be a very loud proponent against these people and against the mind control and against the the uh, reptilians that have overtaken all of the. And you know what, Scott? That's a big deal. See, they know that I know that they're not human. And and they know that people are laughing at me saying, oh, my gosh, she thinks they're not human. She thinks they're right. They know that. But at some point, at some point, everyone is going to see a, 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 per, a reptilian, a person switch into a reptilian and back. They're going to see it. And they're going to remember back what they heard on this on this program. So, that's one of the reasons they don't want me to tell anybody this stuff because they know that at some point you're going to know it's true. And had I not said anything, nobody else out there, and I've had this verified by tons of people, nobody is talking about this stuff on these so-called Christian blog talk crap. Nobody, and it's crap, okay? Crap, crap, crap. It's not even good. Because what they're doing is they're feeding you full of stuff that isn't even worth anything. Oh, there's going to be giants. Big deal. Let's move on, man. Who's running the government now? Okay, who's doing it? It's not you. It's not me. Who's doing that? We're supposed to be the ones that run the government. There's, we're supposed to be in charge, right? But it's not. And people think they're human beings, and they're not human. They're anything but human. So, you know, and they, they, they don't ever talk about these people that are eating the little children, raping children and eating them, and they have to drink their blood and eat, you know, to maintain uh, their human, you know, uh, cloaking. And it's just really disgusting, the stuff that they have to do to maintain this. And, and you don't hear anybody else talking about it. And that's why they don't want me to talk about it. Because it's right now I probably sound like a kook. To, to most people out there, and they're running over and listening to the 700 Club and getting their feel-good, you know, their demons. They're getting their demons on, man, because they're getting more and more demons every time you watch that stuff. They're just sucking up the demons like a hoover. So you need to turn that, that junk off and stop listening to that. Those people work for Lucifer, and they're not human. You need to get it in your head because back in the ancient days, this is exactly what happened then. Look at the elongated skulls. Look at all the stuff that, that they have uncovered in archaeology in Egypt. Who were the reigning people? Every one of them were hybrids. Every one of them. Look at them. King Tut had an elongated skull. All these things. 
they were in power then and they're in power now. So they're not they're not humans and you need to you know, you need to get that through your head and you need to get settled with it because you're gonna find out maybe too late that you didn't pay attention and you're gonna have these reptilians on your front door and they they were your neighbors. You know, because they live among us. They're professors at universities, they're nurses, doctors, you know, they're everywhere. So, be, and also, Scott, you know, when you were saying that they can make you think things or make you hear things, um, that's true because they were actually telling um, our, you know, Jose, who's been on this other show, they were telling him as he was just like barely falling asleep, they told him, to make this sign of the pyramid with his hands, and he said it was like a, a direct order because, you know, he's a former Marine, and he couldn't make his hands not do it. Like he, he was like, no, leave me alone. I want to go to sleep. Like he didn't realize what was happening, and they literally forced his hands to move to do that. And once that happened, he called me and told me about it, and then later – uh, it happened again, and he said, next time if this happens, I'm going to do thus and such. And sure enough, when it happened again, he did it. He immediately went into warfare, and um, the first time when he did it, they said, thank you. Thank you. And they left. That's what they said. Thank you. Good job. And left. This time, he had FBI surveillance outside his home in his neighborhood. And they were surveilling him because they tried to do it to him, and he said no and started calling on the Lord. So you can see now right after that, when we were, him and I were on the phone, on his Wi-Fi pops up FBI, and they were out, and he went up and down two streets with me on the phone trying to find the van, and they took off. So you see how they're targeting certain people. But now I know why my dad acted like he did all those years because he was, under all this mind control, and that's what they were doing to him. So you see, Scott, they're telling him what to do, telling him good job if he did it, and people don't believe this stuff is happening, but, you know, you can speak a little bit better to the fact that they are speaking into your head because you could explain that a little better than me. Go ahead. Well, I mean, it's the technology that I've been describing and been teaching on, and so the mind control with the influences to to inject thoughts so your thoughts are not your own. What you may be thinking is not coming from you to give you the impression to go do something, just like this horrible killing where this 19-year-old college student killed this husband and wife. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of detail in there that needs to be examined. Now, um, one thing, I remember the video you sent me, Julie, about the FBI had gone to this woman's home, and she turned on her smartphone or iPhone video, and while they were talking to her and questioning her, she was videotaping them, okay? Okay. When you watch the videotape, you'll see that these two FBI agents with their ID badges claiming to be such are not even human. Their eyes go to the snake eyes, the goat eyes, they do the slit thing. And, and so uh, it was one of the cl classic examples that though they may be of the agency, that doesn't mean they're human. And if they're not human then they're not on the, under the auspices of, the, uh, of, of you know, our Constitution. So then they believe they have the right to do whatever they want to do. You see how they think. Now, <clears throat> when it comes to electronics, we need to remember that the mind control, uh, the psychotronics, all of the stuff that they're doing in its network is, is a duplication or an attempt at duplication of the beast system to be omnipresent, omnipotent, because they cannot be everywhere at one time. Now they have their own spiritual network, but there's some limitations. And so through this mind control, through the hive mentality control, that's how they get the masses to do what they do. And just as you were talking about with Jose, for him to physically go against his own will to make that pyramid shows you the control that they have. Now, when it comes to GPSs, cell phones, the Internet, this is all hackable. The, the, the psychotronics technology of the GWEM 
of of iridium of of cell towers is hackable. Now that means that even the Illuminati, they themselves could lose control of it from another faction, from another group of of whatever. And so this has put us into a very bad position. Now, what I what I want to stress again that if if you are not in Jesus Christ, the only way out of this is Him. Julie and I are both bond servants of our Lord Jesus. Now, that means that we take everything serious of God's Word and what Jesus did, and in all power and all authority given to us through His sacrifice with Him who lives in us, then we can, you know, deal with these things as the Holy Spirit directs us, because this is beyond. And, and again, we've mentioned, we've talked about this, the 66 books, uh, you know, where's the others? And, and were those books significant in warning us and telling us about this technology to be used in these times? I think so. And, in fact, there are things that Julie's pointed out, too, that actually are in, in what we do have. So this means that, again, with with the mind control, we ain't seen anything yet. We're going to see things that are just going to blow us away. And we, we just want you to be ready for this. Now, I want to bring up something else. <clears throat> Getting back to the nature of, of the beast when it comes to supposedly the mainstream churches. Um, I have recently had to deal with many cases where they went to a church, where they went to a healing room, they went to some type of deliverance ministry and they got worse they have more demons now could they have been chipped could they have been uh had the nano put into them from these facilities maybe so maybe so but i do know i fear demon when i see it and i know that what's happened with the laying on of hands and paul reminds us not to be quick about doing that because with your open doors, with the curses that you have, and you haven't got cleaned up yet, that when you subject yourself because you have not tested the Spirit, you have not verified it against the Word of God, that there's those things that can come into you. And so I'm dealing with a lot of people right now that um, are in worse shape because they didn't hear my warning, they didn't listen to me, and they went elsewhere. And or before even knowing me, they went to these different groups and that from that day forward, they were never the same again. There was a lot more demonization that took place. So please be very careful. Understand, I never let anyone lay hands on me unless I know them. I'm very selective, and I'm very particular about who prays over me. Because there are many that have that would just love to infect me. There are many who would just love to curse me. You know, I got a, it was a year ago, I think now, that I got a phone call, and it was from the Philadelphia area. Uh, and, and when I answered the phone, they had cut the throat of an animal. It was gurgling and breathing through the, no, through the neck, and I could hear somebody in the background chanting. Okay? Immediately hung up, immediately went into warfare, and the next day, if, you know, I think the, the name of the program is This Means War. If you go back on Scott Hanser Network, and I immediately went into war and sent everything back, not receiving it. Now, this, l let me tell you, you better understand who you are. You better understand this really is a fight. This is for your life. The life you save may not just be your own, but your own children and your grandchildren. Because the enemy is very serious. Those who are Luciferians... Of, of, the, of this, you know, um, seed of Satan, their goal is to destroy us. Their goal is to take over this world. And so you and I are, are just standing in the way, and we need to be eliminated by their view. So that means that if we do not fight, we're going to die. I do not intend to die because of these, these evil entities that are against God. They're God's enemies, period. And so if they're God's enemies, then they're my enemies. And that means that I'm going to do what I can to stop them. So again, that's... that. And, and Julie was talking about the sacrifices, those things that they do to children. Who in the world does that to children? Huh? 
I mean, come on. So you understand how evil they are. And they have killed millions of children. And they will continue to kill children. You know, the, the, the hospitals, and we, we talked about those things of genital mutilation that's done to young boys under the name of circumcision, that that trauma alone splits. That trauma alone uh, causes the young man not to be who God intended him to be. It's a curse. We see this in Galatians that it's a curse because these things were all put away. We're under a new covenant. And by doing such things, then we're putting ourselves back underneath the law. Now, <clears throat> that means that those who have chosen to do what is right, to do what we've been called to do, to do you know, the commandments of Jesus Christ, and we do them because we love him, that we are the ones of the remnant who stand against even those who call us, call us brothers and sisters. Because a house divided, we see that Jesus comes back with a sword. And we see that there are those people that the love will grow cold and many will fall away from the church. So, you know what? You better get yourself right. You better understand who your enemies are. You better understand who your friends are. And if you have somebody that you love and you can rely on that relationship needs to be strengthened you need to be brought under an agreement okay so you can't be divided because that's going to be one of the last one of the the tactical efforts is to divide you know um <clears throat> there was a time that tv shows were to show that there was a lesson to be learned about rearing the children right to be ethical, to have values, to make good decisions, to be loving and kind. And now these programs that kids watch are all hypersexual, all have to do with nudity, all have to do with homosexuality, all have to do about me, me, me. It's a programming to divide. And that's only one aspect because of all this technology that we've been talking about. That in itself with these subliminal messages and the influences of the brain, and as the child progresses, because I've, I've talked before that cell phones on children, that if you get a child who uses that phone for two minutes, let's say they're in the fourth grade, and at, at recess when they go out during lunch or whatever they do, and they use their phone, it's going to take two hours for their brain to come back to normal. question is, does it really? Okay, so in that time, they can be influenced. They can be uh, more subject to um, uh, anger, uh, things that refer that that give the appearance of of being, you know, uh, ADHD. And and so, what do they do? They medicate the kids, when in reality, it's been an influence of technology, and, and along with curses. So there's a lot of a lot of kids that are under curses. They can't sit still. It's just just a horrible situation. All right, Julie, anything you want to close up with, and then I'll finish it out. Go ahead. Um, just Yeah, I just wanted to reiterate that if you have an order that's waiting on you, please call me or email me and give me your number and your address again because it's missing. But anyway, um, the, you know what, Scott, This I, I have to tell you, it's so frustrating, and I try not to blow a cork and just, you know, I – it's just frustrating how they are messing with you and messing with me. They, you know, and it's and then then you sit back and you look at these morons that are on these other all this other Christian stuff going everywhere. And what's the thing? Nothing's happening to them. They never get any harassment or you know seven the seven hundred club you said had I think you said they had millions of watchers. And I'm thinking, well, you know, they get millions and they're telling lies and they're not telling the truth and they're just, you know, stroking everybody and they're giving people money and uh, the, the people are giving their money and all this stuff. And I do know that there's one um, uh, person that I know in Seattle and she, she to this day still believes that all those miracles on the 700 Club, she believes they're all real. And I don't believe any of it because I know they're just trying to, I think these people are liars and I think they come on there and they lie about this stuff so that they can get more money. So I just think that's, that's what's going on. So anyway, if you happen to have something waiting on you or ordered, you need to let 
go ahead and email me or call me because that's what's going on. They completely deleted all my, my data, completely gone. So, and don't forget to pray for the kids. So that's two things I wanted to say before we close up. All right. And I want to remind everyone, of course, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, Tinfoil Hat Club, and Tuesdays and Thursdays, Scott Henson Network, when I do my show, and I'm I'm going through the Freemasonry renouncing, okay? Now, um, a, a, as I've been doing the shows, what I'm doing is I'm following the downloadable P, PDF that's on my website at scotthenser.org, and it's it's a standard doc that I've been using all of these years. Uh, I've, I've, I've used this thing 15, 16 years now. And it's free, so you can just download it and print it out. And I recommend that everyone go through it because I know everyone has Freemason in some form or another in their family, which brings a curse. And so what I've been doing is, is uh, incrementally going through the different, we're up, we're up to the third degree, um, and, and um, so I'm discussing the curses uh, describing the names of things that you're renouncing, because some of these names, you know, you go, what? I've never heard of that before. Well, remember, it's a secret society. So they have some very strange names that mean something to them, doesn't mean anything to us, but it's part of the oath. And in that oath, that since you are committing yourself to the dark side, you're bringing a curse upon yourself and your family. So those who, who have fathers and grandparents that were in the Freemasons are carrying a curse. And, I've, and I go down through the list from respiratory to, to being emotionally separate from your wife. And we're only up to the third degree. Wait till we get really deep into it. And then you'll find just how involved the Antichrist is in, in that. And uh, these things are an abomination. We're told not to practice such things. And so I'm doing everything I can to expose it for you to be set free. Because over and over and over again over the years, that uh, if it got down to a point where there was some things that we just couldn't get rid of, um, coming back to the Freemasonry, renouncing prayers, and it takes a while to do it, then we find out that there was actually some very heavy involvement. Um, those things, uh, Jesuits, Rosicrucian, uh, you know, even involved in the, the, the Illuminati, the Cabal, not just Masonry, okay, the Elks Lodge, the Moose Lodges, okay, the Shriners. All of this stuff is based under the pyramid of Satan and or Lucifer. And, and that means that by applying yourself, dedicating yourself, and taking oaths, that then you have given yourself to them mind, body, and soul. And that means the lake of fire. That means the second death. But because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we can be redeemed. We can come out. We can be brought out of this situation. And the time's running very short. That's one of the reasons I'm doing this. And so I'm going to continue this up until the end of the month. And then I'm going to make a decision whether I'm going to keep that channel or not and combine it with this one. I'm not sure yet. Um, so we'll just see how it goes. And again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I can only do this through your support. And, and so we're at a crucial time right now. And so anything you can do to help out, I really appreciate it. And, and so that's just the way that goes. All right. Um, I'm going to just uh, bring in some more things here with this last minute. And that is, <clears throat> I want you to understand that your local agencies – your police departments, even your hospitals, that the infiltration, the, the, the manipulation has gone so deep, especially those that are in military and, and go to you know, the, the military hospitals and stuff. Look, the, the America is not America anymore. We were asleep at the wheel. Uh, they took control. We have an infestation of, of those who give the appearance of being human, uh, and, and we have clones, and we have those that are even satanically richly abused under monarch that are, you know, capable of doing things. And, and, and so we have to be very vigilant and very careful about who we talk to, about who we interact with, who we allow into our lives. 
Now, you can have an individual that doesn't even know they're under mind control that can infiltrate into your life. You think they're a best friend. You think you're their buddy, but they may actually be a controller. They may actually be somebody who was assigned to you for that very task of keeping an eye. And you yourself, many of you who listen, might actually be under that program. Now, I want to mention, too, that there are other shows and people who deal with satanic ritual abuse individuals. So I have a question. If, if I have been, if, if, you know, this is my 16th year in deliverance, and it's only been in the past five years that I've really come across this, um, that if I, if I was in a satanic ritual abuse organization to bring people out, why would I not be more up on psychotronics? Why would I not talk about it more? Why would I not cross it over to that this, this electronic means is one of the ways to control the SRA, the satanic ritual abuse, the one who's monarch, coming out of the MK Ultras? So it, it, to, to bring a question that those other talk shows and those other so-called ministries, why, ha, why is this not one of the top subjects and why has it not been uh, for 10 years at a minimum? Okay, I'm just throwing it out there. We need to ask ourselves this. Because if I had, had been involved in more into the monarch and into the satanic ritual abuse, uh, uh, I think I would have found this out a lot sooner. Because, see, there's a lot of deliverance ministries out there that will still not address the psychotronics. Some ministries won't even address uh, the fact of multiple personalities, of alters, fragmentation. They'll still say that it's demonic. No, it is not. This is real. This is fallen angel technology. This is being implemented against uh, all of us. And, and we all get hurt. We all get wounded. We, you know, we're abandoned, we're rejected, we're, you know, we're violated. And that deep wound of betrayalment is massive. And so each of us are susceptible to that because that was never intended for us to happen to us in the garden. That's not how God made us. But because it does, it, it does things to us. And, and, when, and that mechanics of how that works, they've learned to, to control that. And in that control, they're able to manipulate and do things to cause us to do things we wouldn't normally do. And that's crimes against humanity. That was never intended for that to be honest. But that's the last days. So get ready, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Julie. God bless. Good night, everyone.